uh, now let me tell you the clinical features of this condition so first it starts with the toe walking because the muscles that uh, pull up the foot are very weak and later it results in something called a foot drop here and uh, the more this happens there's something called a contracture in the heel here so a contracture refers to uh, shortening of the muscles which is usually uh, permanent okay and so due to this uh, the children initially they are not able to run as fast as other children they start tripping on their feet this uh, sudden episodes of falling all of that can happen okay and uh, some of the other features are uh, the buttocks the buttocks uh, that is the hip buttocks are actually hip straighteners the muscles in the buttocks actually straighten the hip uh, which enables people to stand and walk so next this becomes uh, weak uh, the children find it unable to get up from a seated uh, position usually uh, they can do it with support but gradually even uh, with support they won't be able to do so i will uh, show you a characteristics sign seen in dmd in the next slide and uh, the knees usually might bend back so that uh, the body is uh, more supported and as you can see here there is something called an anti gravity uh, the anti gravity muscles so these are the muscles that have to act against gravity like pulling this up uh, and getting this up all of that so these will start getting weak initially but eventually everything uh, starts to get atrophied or starts uh, shrinking so once it affects the leg it starts affecting the hands so usually the shoulders and arms are held like this so uh, all the doctors you can notice that there is a retraction here so usually there's a muscle here called serratus anterior that brings the uh, shoulders forward so that becomes weak and later uh, even these muscles here the shoulder muscles may become weak and uh, making it difficult for them to lift their hand without support and later it starts involving the elbow and also the wrist and uh, if eventually over time all of this uh, do result in do go into a contracture and the best way to prevent that is by uh, doing regular physiotherapy which i'm sure will be told by the other doctors and see this uh, condition is very greedy it doesn't stop with just this and this later it starts affecting the spine so here this is what we called a lordotic spine where the spine comes excessively in the front this is due to uh, the muscles here and also the, the belly being weak so as you guys know these abs are very important uh, for support but because these are too weak it enables it to come forwards and later the neck starts getting weak okay. and then don't think that's all there's still a lot of things that can uh, happen with this condition it's very greedy see come on let's see what else it can do okay. so this is a uh, goer sign which is characteristic sign for uh, people with uh, muscular dystrophy and uh, if there's any uh, uh, doctor out there who notices this in a child please uh, uh, help them contact the neurologist so that uh, it can be diagnosed early yeah. okay so this is a gover sign so th here is where the child is sleeping and look at how he's getting up he takes the support of the floor and uh, see only with the support of his floor and later with support of the thighs a child can get up so this is cover sign and is very uh, specific for uh, duchenne's muscular dystrophy okay now let's go to the dangerous things that can be caused uh, in dmd uh, usually the nothing happens to the lungs but it's almost always due to the muscles involved in it that cause uh, problems so uh, whenever there's a problem with these muscles that is the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm we get something called a restricted uh, uh, lung disease so it is because the uh, mus these two muscles that i mentioned they don't allow uh, the chest to expand completely 
Okay, and see, as I mentioned here, intercostal muscles. These are the muscles between the ribs, and the main muscle is the diaphragm. So that's why I would request all uh, people with this to do regular breathing exercise to prevent all of this from happening. And in addition to this, sometimes it can cause an airway airway obstruction here which causes difficulty in breathing and the spinal cord being involved like as I mentioned the lordosis and sometimes scoliosis that is sideways tilting of the spine can cause uh, problems in the lungs so everything is basically because uh, the uh, it causes some problems in expansion of the things and sometimes there can be something in the brain that can uh, trigger this So another important thing to be aware of is something called cardiomyopathy. So cardiomyopathy in simple words means uh, it's a condition which causes problems with the heart muscles. Okay. Uh, so this is a normal heart. So these are the chambers of the heart. Okay. And in early DCM, you can see that there's something here and uh, there is not much change here. But in the end stage dilated cardiomyopathy, look at how big it becomes. So because of this, the heart is not able to pump blood effectively out of it. So this we can chuck in an echo with something called ejection fraction. That is how much the heart is able to pump out blood. And also we look at after heart pumping out blood, how much blood is still left in the heart. So that indicates the function of the heart. And the usual investigations done are uh, creatinine phosphokinase. So this is a marker which indicates breakdown of the muscles. So this will be very high. So an EMG or an electromyogram is where you put electrodes, uh, you put electrodes and stimulate the muscles and you look at once you stimulate how they contract. So in DMD, uh, obviously there will be uh, some problems. And biopsy is the best way to confirm whether it's a DMD or not. So biopsy, I'm sure everybody knows, usually the biopsy is taken of the bicep muscle. So that you can find what is wrong. Okay. In addition, there are some genetic tests like before we had PC, uh, PCR and now we have things like MLPA, etc. which will tell exactly which uh, gene is uh, missing which uh, exon is uh, missing and hopefully it will result in uh, you know targeted treatments for that in the future and before finishing i would like to talk a few words about the mental health aspect of uh, dmd so uh, the first and foremost important things in these conditions are uh, the one is the social support and one more is the environmental support so social support refers to uh, people understanding uh, that uh, people with dmd are also humans and actually treating them like humans instead of doing the other way around like uh, uh, you know uh, you know uh, laughing at them joking at them ignoring them being very insensitive to them so these kind of uh, things, it really puts people with DMD down. But otherwise, if you are like, uh, you provide a good social support to people with uh, DMD, it's very important. So first of all, I urge all the parents of uh, children with DMD to encourage them to do whatever they like and be a very important source of support for them. And the other part is uh, the environmental support. See, many uh, buildings, uh, especially in uh, certain uh, cities, they are not accessible to uh, people with uh, DMD and other conditions. So I would like to send this message through to uh, people, uh, to the higher ups who are involved in uh, this, to please create some uh, supportive environment so that uh, people with DMD can go where they like they can socialize see because people with dmd are also human beings like everybody else
uh, and some uh, and one of the most common challenges i've found in uh, people with vmd is that they say that uh, nobody can understand them they don't have any friends at all yeah and i, I mean unfortunately in sometimes you do end up in certain situations so i would uh, also like to uh, tell you more about how you can handle this uh, sense of loneliness when you don't have uh, you don't feel you have anybody around with you yeah so obviously i would like to talk about the mental health aspects in uh, uh, detail some uh, other time and i would like to leave you with uh, this figure which will uh, show you the difference between a normal muscle see here a normal muscle and the one which is dark is the muscle membrane okay and here you can see that they're not as good as normal still it uh, the stability is not here compared to this look at here it's almost like non-existent you can hardly make out uh, faint outlines of muscles uh, and uh, towards the end i would like to thank uh, a bharat md foundation for giving me an opportunity to present about uh, dmd on uh, world dushans awareness day and i really hope my uh, talk today has been helpful thank you